Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my spring series. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. So this is my inspiration piece off of Pinterest that I saw last year and I fell in love with this you guys and I think it's because of all the grooves and texture that it has. It's not made from like a factory cookie press type situation. I think that was very homemade and the wood was left more, you know, in its natural state. So the Dollar Tree bird houses are smooth and factory made and sanded you know so i'm using spackling on top of this to try and bring back that wild wood look so this i'm just going to take a craft stick apply it like frosting and then instead of trying to smooth out all of those lines i'm going to try and recreate grooves and looks of bark and grain you know i guess like chopped wood like firewood now if I, I know that I can't get it identical because, you know, this is the Dollar Tree birdhouse, but if I can even just capture the energy, which I do think I succeed at doing, I'm very happy with it at the end, then I'm happy. And it's, you know, a lot of these are inspiration crafts, of course, so they're not going to be identical, but if you can catch the same energy, the feeling that a craft gives you when you look at it, that joy that you get you've hit your mark, at least for me. It doesn't have to be identical, but if it brings me joy when I look at it the same way the photo did, I know that I'm on target. So after the spackling dries, the next day, I go ahead and give it a coat of white acrylic paint just to give it a little more structure and protection so that the spackling doesn't crumble off. And now I'm just taking some of the darker gray called Pavement from Apple Barrel and I'm dry brushing it on to accentuate those grooves but I know that I need to smear it and make it look kind of hazy and cloudy and grayish and you know just like the picture it wasn't a totally clean white paint it looked like it was dirty so I'm using a wet sponge oh my gosh you guys I need to get a new sponge that's looking pretty tatty isn't it <laughs> <laughs> but it works it does the job it, it does a lot of scrubbing I'll tell you to clean the surfaces where I craft but that's what I'm going to do and now I'm applying the wax is you can use any wax for this it's an antiquing wax it's brown and I'm going to lightly do the same thing with the sponge just purposely smear it so that you get a little bit of the like a stain almost everywhere and then I'm gonna you'll see me in a bit I will go over to accentuate all of the design that I put in there that I don't want to lose either this is just the starting point yeah, and that's what we have now. We're just going around the hole. We were just doing our distressing and our normal, you know, making things look rustic and kind of pretty. And I decide to, I want that little sign. Now on the original piece, it's a sign that's hanging off of the little wood pole that the bird would sit on, but I don't have that option because it would be too low to the ground. Mine is, you know, the Dollar Tree one is lower down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on the rooftop, but I think it still comes up super, super cute. So you saw how I deliberately cut that craft stick crooked. I edged it with a bit of brown paint, a little bit of that blue paint. I just kind of dry brushed it and scribbled it on there. Wrote the word Easter. I don't have the best handwriting, sorry you guys, but I wanted it to look homemade, so it's all good. And that's it, and I love this. This little guy is just the classic Dollar Tree Easter item that you find at most Dollar Trees. And I know there's somebody out there pulling their hair out because he's never come to their Dollar Tree. But most Dollar Trees do have this little ceramic bunny and he literally just shouts tear tray decor when you walk by him. He just needs a little bit of painting. That's actually how he sold. He sold with a little paint kit at the bottom. It's super cheap, nasty paint, but you can use uh, obviously more expensive paint. 
Well, last year I did a really soft version, but I looked at him this year and I thought, you know, we're going to move you. We're going to put you, he was packed away for Easter, but we're going to put him on the tiered tray this year. And we're going to make him more modern and more pronounced, I guess, have more personality and more character. I started off painting him white with acrylic paint. Last year I just left him, you know, in his natural ceramic state. But this year I wanted him painted. I did decide to leave his ears pink, but we're just using a fine tip black Sharpie pen to give this little guy some personality. going to need one of these little wooden square pictures and three carrots from the Dollar Tree. This is some little oh, vine that I got at Hobby Lobby. It's like a eight foot wrapped vine, I think, of little tiny mini leaves. And I thought it would be perfect for mini crafts. So I snatched that up. And I'm starting off by giving this one coat of white acrylic paint. Now I decided to pull out the I don't know, the raffia that comes out of those carrots because it's kind of cheap and nasty. And it's super easy to do because it's styrofoam and you just poke whatever kind of greenery you want down the center and voila, you have much more expensive looking greenery coming out of your carrots. I mean, it really just notches it up to a very, you know, a more expensive look really easily. So take the time to do that if you can, you guys, because it does make a difference. And now I'm just drawing my little faux lines for planks there on this. I'm not worried too much because it's small, so it can look a little faux-ish. And I'm taking some of the pewter gray this time and dry brushing. And I'm doing the same technique I did with the birdhouse. I'm just kind of you know, dirtying it up just a little bit because I like my decor rustic. You don't have to do this. You can leave it snow white with the planks if you've got a modern farmhouse and you want that look. That's also very pretty and crisp and clean looking, but I kind of like it a little bit gently antiqued. So that's what we're doing now. And now I'm just gluing on the carrots. You can certainly stop here because this is definitely a less is more craft. I mean, it looks good just as is. You don't have to go any farther. But when I lifted it up and I was kind of checking it out, I thought, you know, there I am. I'm doing it right there. I want to make a little mini sign for this one too. So see how I'm cutting and I'm deliberately going at angles and kind of turning my scissors there. I'm trying to make a little mini farmhouse sign for this and it's going to say rabbit eats free because I knew when I moved my tear tray down to my kitchen and I decorate everything I want to sit that little white ceramic bunny next to this sign and I just thought that was such a cute message anyway you can leave this out if you want I just thought it added so much cuteness to this craft <laughs> This is also found at many Dollar Trees, and this is a super easy DIY. I don't even know if you can technically call this a DIY, but I thought I'd share it with you because again, this is something when I walk through my Dollar Tree, it just kind of screams tiered tray decor. And there's so many things you can do with this. I mean, 
you can make these up for Halloween, you can make them up for fall, you can make them up for Christmas. We're making this one up, of course, for Easter and spring season. And we're going to slap some white paint on it because that's the first step there to get it nice, fresh and bright and cheerful for the season. So I removed that little key thing on the top. I am giving it a coat of white primer first and then I give a coat of the acrylic paint after that dries because I don't want it anything to chip off. It is kind of a shiny surface. And now I'm just using a sponge with a little bit of the pavement color again from Apple Barrel and I'm just giving some little accent and dimension and that's it. This was a super easy craft. It's super fun. Looks super cute on my tear tray. Very very classy looking when it's all painted up. Now the top of it I want to add some spring flowers but I could kind of tell the way the top was with the big hole in it was going to present a little bit of a challenge for gluing flowers on and having them stay. There was really no strong surface up there. So the solution to that for me, because you can see how it's kind of lumpy there, it just, everything just seemed like it, you had to be there, I guess, but it didn't seem like it would hold things well. So I decided to go ahead and take some Dollar Tree jute twine, wrap it around a little bit, tie it, and then that's what I'm gonna glue the floral accents on because they will definitely stay that way. So here I go, I'm just gonna glue some flowers in pink and yellows and greens and spring colors, and that's it. That's the extent of this craft, you guys, and I absolutely love the way that this craft came out. For this craft you're going to need some of these wood tags and some printouts of your choice. Now these are free printables, they will be down below in my description box and you're going to cut whatever you choose, whatever print that you want to use. You're going to cut it out as close as you can to the edges and I'm going to use my glue stick because I have mentioned in previous videos for those of you that have been watching that this works really really well for pretty much a guarantee for no wrinkles and no mess ups. And so especially when you're dealing with little tiny petite crafts, you really want something that you know for sure is going to stick. And if, it, if you're wondering if it's sticky, you can see there I'm showing you it's actually sticking to my finger and I'm scared I'm gonna tear it. It's a very sticky glue and it's sticking great. Everything's perfect. So really, really pleased with those Dollar Tree glue sticks definitely worth the money. And now I'm taking some burnt umber just going around the edge to give it a little bit of distressing. And this is a pin trust inspired craft, I have to be honest. I saw these tags up on Easter tier trays and I thought they were so cute. They didn't look anything like these. These are my own creation, but I just thought the idea of having little tags up there as accent pieces in the tiny little areas on your tier tray would makes such a cute decor piece. Now this little guy is a little too light. I don't know why he didn't print out. So I just take some pencil and just make sure you can see his legs, his arm and give him more definition. And I tie a little gingham bow on the top there for him and a lace bow on the other one. And I'm just using that sponge now to outline their bodies. I decide after I do the bow that they need to pop just a little bit more. But honestly, you guys, I love how these two turned out. For this next craft, you're going to need some Dollar Tree wood beads, these little white buckets found in the wedding section, and these sticker letters from the Dollar Tree. So for those of you that were wondering, what do I do with these obnoxiously loud wooden beads? <laughs> because they are super rainbow. I mean, they are so bright. So if you're into like neutral colors, you know, the rainbow isn't in. This is a great DIY craft. So I glued them together. You just pick them out in different sizes and make your little carrot shape and cuticle clippers for snipping off 
extra hot glue that's hanging over the edge where you don't want it to be seen. Wonderful tool. I use it all the time and I just wanted to mention that in case you guys haven't thought of it. And here in my supply, I have the green twine. I don't know where I got it from. I've had it for years, but it's finally come in handy now for this because I'm going to use this for the top of the carrots. And I'm making a tassel very thin and I'm also tying the bottom of it closer to the top because I don't want too big of a bulge at the bottom there and that's what you end up with but if you don't have green you could just use the brown one from the Dollar Tree and then hit it with a little bit of green paint and a sponge in fact that might even look better because it would have all the character and dimension but you can make it work and this is what we end up with you guys it's super cute so now we need a little place for these carrots to go and that's going to be the bucket so we're making the sign carrots for 25 cents and this burlap here is also found at the dollar tree it's in their birthday section their burlap banners they're usually sold all year round at least at my dollar tree they are and they are great for crafts if you just want to grab some burlap real quick without having to go into another store really quick way to get some crafting burlap just for little crafts and i'm using the reindeer moss i'm going to sit these guys down into this bucket and this is just a super cute DIY for Easter for a little tiered tray. I love this. For this craft, you're going to need these little wooden squares here, and they are sold at the Dollar Tree. Someone came on and told me that, and I also saw it in another video, so you can use those. These little roses there, I made those from the same recipe that I used to make wooden beads in my DIY wooden bead video. If you want to know about that video, go check it out. I'll leave the link in the description box. But I had some left and I rolled it up and made roses for spring. And then this is a sign that is a free printable. It will be down below my description box. And here's where I get really annoyed, you guys. My camera battery ran out while I was filming how, you know, I just glued it on, but I made the frame using hot glue and I'm showing you now really slowly because you can figure it out what I did I just went and put lines going down and created like a faux wood grain it just gives it character and some um, 3d effect for frames it's a fun quick cheap way to get a frame on it and you know it takes seconds to do and you can do whatever designs you want if you want your frame to have little curly cubes or little dots maybe like little beads but it's just a fast, quick way. Turns out when I put that burnt umber on, it was a little too dark. So I put a little bit of the country tan on by Apple Barrel just to kind of soften that up. And I go back over it with white. And then I decide, you know, that looks too light. So you can actually see me bring out the definition again because I'm losing the definition of the frame. But before I do that, I take a little bit of pink paint and I'm just sponging just the tips of those roses. I did paint them white. A lot of people ask me if they can paint those beads. You can with acrylic paint. I've never used any other kind of paint, so I can't vouch. I've never colored them. Well, actually I did use some um, iron oxides once. They're dry powders and that colored them, but the colors were so pastel that I wasn't happy with the outcome. So I always end up painting them with acrylic paint. Now I'm just adding a little burnt umber back into the frame there to give it some dimension. And I also hit the roses a little bit to distress them and antique them. Those roses are what make this craft. I don't know if the camera's gonna do it justice, but they just are so gorgeous, the 3D effect. And I just think they look so pretty at the top. But this is what we end up with when we're all done. <laughs> For this craft, I'm using a hula skirt from the Dollar Tree, but if you have some raffia, you can use that too. And a mayonnaise a lid, any lid you can find like this, you just need some kind of shape. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint this lid brown using my favorite color, you guys. I talk about it all the time, the burnt umber from Apple Barrel, but I just love this color. I think it's an all around color and it works. You know, it's just very versatile. 
and I'm just sponging it on because I want to tone the white down just a little bit and now I'm going to start cutting long strands of the raffia up and you're going to see me take sections of it like this and twist it and start creating a bird nest. Now, if you happen to have Spanish moss at your Dollar Tree, one, I'm totally jealous, and two, use that because that would be a lot easier. But if you don't, uh, this is a great DIY to show you guys how to improvise, which is pretty much what I had to do my whole life. I was crafting way before there were Dollar Tree crafts, Dollar Tree videos, before there was YouTube. I found out while I was doing this craft, it was easier to tie a knot and then glue it down so that it doesn't come apart while you're pulling and twisting. And you're just gonna see me twist and keep wrapping this around and around to create the bottom and the sides and create a little bird nest. When you finally get to this point there, it's a, it's a good start, it's a good frame, but I wanted it to have that look. You know, it kind of has that, I, I still, I was after that Spanish moss look, so I took this straw, I think it was Easter straw I got for Easter basket, I honestly don't remember where I got this straw, but I knew I had it, and I also knew it wasn't the right color. I didn't want to move too far into fall. So you're going to see me glue this straw down, I'm just patient, I keep breaking it in little pieces, I keep putting hot glue on this nest, and rolling it around, you'll see me put hot glue here, and then I kind of roll it down on the broken pieces there, and you just, you know, I'm, I'm watching a fun movie there. I'm having fun. So I'm just enjoying myself crafting. It's fun. And, you know, it was a little time consuming, but it was fun. And I was pleased with the results when we were done. But of course, it's not the right color. So what do I do? I take my favorite paint, Burnt Umber, add a little tiny bit of black because I want that color kind of of a Spanish moss. And I just start going for it. I just start tapping it with a brush, tapping it with a brush. And it's very, very messy. I'm using my fingers and hands. They get covered in paint. And so I actually pick it up and that helps um, put more paint on it, I guess. And then I take a little territorial beige and go over it because I'm just trying, you know, I'm trying to think of what a real bird nest looks like and what I'm trying to create there. And I'm really close. I'm really happy with it. This is what we get the next morning when it dries. And I have an old bag of this moss, but it's all just broken little bits. It's not good enough to create the whole nest and I don't have enough of it. So that's why I had to do the straw. But I realize the border, you know, if I put it on the border, it will give it exactly that missing touch and it works really really well look at this you guys we have a nest and i love this all we do is add some eggs and we're good to go For this next craft, you'll need some reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree, some craft sticks, and a box, any old box, some little eggs of your choosing, and some pretty napkins of your choosing as well. And last but not least, these are the cheap nasty eggs I got at the Dollar Tree last year before they were selling the carton ones that they probably still, they probably have the Easter stuff out now at my Dollar Tree. But to be honest, I had so many good ideas ready to go and I had enough craft supplies, I didn't even go check. But I start off with these eggs here and I take my cuticle clippers. I clip off any kind of edges that are jutting out a little bit too much. I use my hot glue on the inside to close these eggs up so I don't have to worry about them opening while I'm working with them. But I showed you how they had holes in them which freaked me out and then I realized look how handy they come in. I'm gonna take these outside and spray paint and I use some, some foam that I got from 
a package that was mailed to me, some skewer sticks. I poke those little babies up into the holes on the eggs, take them outside, spray paint, and everything's great. So I'm just using Mod Podge with a little bit of water here, and I'm going to start to apply those flowered napkins. Next, I'm taking a color I mixed up with a little bit of blue and gray to create the egg colors. I want to do, you know, they're very on trend right now, the brown and blue eggs. I want to create those. And I happen to love the way these Dollar Tree foam eggs look when you paint them, the rough texture. I think they are so, so pretty. So everything that I just did with the eggs now is drying and I decide of course we need a little wooden crate like a little farmhouse crate to stick all these pretty things in on the tiered tray you know I just I didn't want to put them on grass so I'm just taking this box here and I'm going to go about covering it the whole thing with craft sticks. So I invite you to follow me on Instagram and on Pinterest. You can reach me there. But I really want to talk about Pinterest real quick because I have a lot of new subscribers who may not be aware that I created a board for my subscribers' crafts. I absolutely love to see your crafts just like I love to craft. I love to appreciate what you guys do, especially if I've inspired you and you make something that I made or a version of it or just something that I made inspired you to craft something else. I love to see it. And a lot of people ask me, you know, how do I share my photo with you? So you go to Pinterest, you create an account, and you upload your photo as a pin. And over there on Pinterest, you can private message people. So you just send your pin to me in the email and I will get it and then share it to that board with your name. And we have some absolutely fabulous crafts. I mean, the page is huge now since I started. So I just wanted to create a place where we can also share your creativity with the world. And when I put it up on my Pinterest, it kind of helps get it out there so the whole world can enjoy your gift too. So make sure you send me your crafts, you guys. I love to see them. I am getting a lot of email now, so I'm kind of falling behind. I'm doing the best I can. If I don't get back to you right away, please don't get hurt or offended. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Just leave it sitting there because I go through my emails when I can, and I love to see your crafts. So please go check out that you know what we have so far over there on Pinterest. Go check out everybody's crafts. We've got some very talented people and some absolutely beautiful crafts up there. And here you saw me using some spackling just to fill in the edges. When you're all done covering these boards, you know, I was squeezing the craft sticks together so you couldn't see the cardboard at the top. And that created some tiny little gaps at the bottom. No big deal. A little bit of spackling and it was gone. Painted it white. And now we're just putting our pretty little eggs in. And this is it. <laughs> For this craft, you'll need this free printable, which is also down below in my description box. And I'm using the like layer of white napkin that was left over after I peeled them apart. You know how those printed napkins have layers to them? And I'm going to just add again a little bit of Mod Podge and water for this craft. I'm showing you approximately you know, how much water I added. Mix it up really, really well because I have kind of an, a vision with this craft. I saw some eggs on Pottery Barn just laying on a table. It was like staged with another craft, but I wasn't looking at the main craft. I was looking at the eggs going, ooh, what are those? Those are cool looking. They almost looked like they had like wrinkles in them and they had a bunch of texture and dimension and I really liked it. So I had an idea and it turned out really good, but this is how I go about doing my egg. Their eggs might've been wood, I'm not sure but my eggs are going to be Mod Podged and Deco Podged with napkins. So I'm putting layers and layers of torn napkin on here and I'm kind of using my fingers on purpose to squeeze and wiggle the napkin and press to make sure that it gets lines and textures in it. I don't want it smooth and I'm tapping with the sponge to get that effect. And then I cut out, you know, I didn't cut all of them out, but I chose my favorites off of those stickers. They're all beautiful, actually. I had a really hard time choosing, but these are the three that I chose. And I'm going to Mod Podge those on the front as well. 
and this is what we have the next day now I decide to paint these snow white because I have a very very specific look that I want I mean you could leave them I had a little bit of shadow under there because I had decoupaged some of the roses on there by accident on one of the edges and so I had to paint this guy and then I thought ooh, that looks really good and you know what else it did the paints thick so it made the bunnies actually kind of sit back and become level with the surface of the egg they didn't look like they were I don't know if that makes sense but the napkin was thinner and the paper was thicker and once I painted them they were all the same level which looked really really nice so now I'm taking a little territorial beige and I'm just going to dry brush them that's it and then take some burnt umber go around and give them a little frame but I'm going for the French country look especially around Easter time I am such a sucker for that but I have to make it tie in with the rest of my farmhouse decor and these eggs worked perfectly for my tear tray I absolutely love them I always ask you guys to pick a favorite and some of you were saying I don't want to pick them if you like them all oh my gosh I love you <laughs> You can tell me you love all my DIYs. I love to hear that. But if you have some favorites, I'd love to hear that too. I just love to hear feedback from you guys. I love you guys so much. Thank you for your support and your love. I appreciate it more than I can say. So now I'm taking some Dollar Tree rounds right there and I'm just gluing them on. Those are their little stands and platforms and we're all done. We're using an old cereal box. You can use poster board if you want to. I just like to recycle. And I'm cutting it in the shape of an envelope. And it's a simple procedure. You just measure out these shapes here so they fit nice and evenly, and then you paint them. And if you're using white poster board, you can skip the painting part. I just think the painting part makes it look a little bit like wood grain, so it adds some more charm. And I lightly sanded the edges, painted both sides, and then there's that free printable there, which will be provided down below in my description box, which I printed up on tissue paper. Super easy to do. You just tape it on cardstock, put it through your printer like you normally would, and voila, you have a print. For this piece, I just used regular old computer paper and printed up some pink stripes and so I'm using the glue stick for all of this envelope here. I wanted to create a side on either of this, you know, on either side of the envelope, like a little pocket. The small craft sticks were too small, and so I just trimmed a little bit off the edge of the larger craft sticks, and I'm gluing them on the side of the envelope. And you'll see now we have two nice little sides right there. Now I noticed the center was kind of dipping in just a little bit. Maybe I'm being picky, but I used a little bit more wood from the craft stick that I cut and I just glued it and put it up in the center. You can't see it, but it held the envelope nice and open. To create the bottom, I'm just using a large craft stick. I wanted this to definitely have like a stand for a base so it didn't have to be perfect and I knew it would tip if it was too small so I just kept it the same size. And now I'm going to fill my little envelope up with greenery. Now I decide afterwards that the edges would look better distressed. So I'm just using a furniture pen from the Dollar Tree. This is my new to go to for distressing. It does a really beautiful job and it's fast and easy to do. And that's it. I love how this came out. Let me know what you guys think. I found these tags at Walmart for 98 cents each. They're little gift tags. They're pretty easy to find now in crafting sections all year round. If you don't have any, you could easily make them out of craft sticks. Just glue a bunch of them together vertically and then hold them together with a horizontal craft stick that's smaller in the back or the front and cut the top to look like a tag and drill a little hole through the top. I've done it in previous videos and it works brilliantly so that it actually has a really cute look like shiplap. 
So here's some free printables that I got from the Graphics Fairy, but I kind of changed them up to make them my own by making them a little bit more pastel, so they will be a free printable down below as well. And you can always go check out thegraphicsfairy.com and she's got some beautiful free printables there too. I'm using a glue stick to apply this and now I'm taking a little bit of the Burnt Umber Paint by Apple Barrel and I'm just going to distress the edges of the tag. I'm also taking and just going around the edges and adding a little shadow here and there and just making them look a little vintage. And I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue at the top and a lace ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby 50% off and place it at the top and just kind of move the little tails around strategically so I can fit the boxwood underneath it and so you know it doesn't get in the way and cover up the boxwood completely. You can use a little hot glue if you need to and just tack down the ribbon and I'm gonna do that on both of them of course and that's it for a little bit of greenery. Next, I'm going to take one of the towering blocks from the Dollar Tree and I'm using these as a stand but I'm leaning the tags back at an angle. I don't know if you can tell. It's at a slight angle so that you can see the image better when it's on the tear tray. And that's it. And I love the way that these came out. Again, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Found this cute little sign at Hobby Lobby. It was only 79 cents, so it beats the Dollar Tree. Be sure to check out Hobby Lobby's clearance aisle, you guys. The signs are beating the Dollar Tree now. And there's a free printable again right there, a super cute bunny. For this one, I printed it up on cardstock because I do want it to be really hardy. I'm also gonna seal the top of it with Mod Podge and glue it down with Mod Podge for the same reason. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just gluing it down with the Mod Podge and now I'm gonna apply a top layer of Mod Podge. I put two coats of Mod Podge on it all together and when it's dry I'm taking that furniture pen again and doing a light distressing around the edge that's it this is a simple DIY and I think it came up so cute the pens are also more like a stain when you use your finger and you'll see me do it here in a minute to smear it it has that sticky feeling more like a wood stain wood and it gives it a really really neat look on the edges for distressing which you don't quite get with paint or with a marker but I really love the way that this came out and again let me know what you think. <music> For this next craft, you're going to need craft sticks. And I just started off by measuring and cutting. We're gonna be making a crate. And it's pretty self-explanatory when you watch me do it. You need three for the sides and three for the ends cut appropriately to whatever measurement or size that you decide you want for your tiered tray. I'm making a little tiny one. So again, I printed these eggs up on tissue paper, my favorite way of transferring at the moment. To me, it beats the Cricut and I do have a Cricut by the way I just don't use it because I know a lot of you guys don't have one and of course it's so much more fun when you can participate and I know you can participate so I really try to do that for you so I just use a glue stick super easy to do you can barely see it on the wood and now I'm just going about making the side of my crate And as you'll notice here, I am using four towering blocks from the Dollar Tree to kind of hold this little crate all together. For the bottom, I'm going to use two jumbo craft sticks that you get from Walmart. I just cut them down to create a nice little bottom for the crate as well.
For those of you that are wondering, I'm just using regular old hot glue. In fact, these hot glue sticks are from the Dollar Tree. I pick them up in a pinch and for little tiny crafts like this that are real dainty, they work just fine. <music> This next DIY using craft sticks are some of my most favorite things to do with craft sticks because it really is sky is the limit. You can make little tiny mini signs, rustic signs, farmhouse signs, high end signs, whatever you want using the craft sticks. I think they're so, so cute for tiered trays. So today we're going to make a little cute sign and you can see I just cut up the center to make the post then I cut one of the large craft sticks jagged around the edges on purpose to make it look broken and old like you would see a sign outside and I always like to do my letters first with pencil just to make sure they're balanced and they look decent and now I'm taking a permanent marker in black this is a Dollar Tree permanent marker and I'm gonna write cottontail farm now I'm just lightly dry brushing some chalk paint on the top to distress it. This is actually homemade chalk paint. I'm just using a container from some chalk paint I owned before. And if you want to check out my video on that, I have two good videos that show you how to make very affordable, uh, really nice quality chalk paint. And here's the furniture marker again, and I'm going to go ahead and go around the edge and this bleeds into raw wood. So it also gives it like a streaky look. It looks really, really good for distressing. And then I'm just going to use it to color the post because it is tiny. So it looks perfect for that as well. You can see what I'm doing. I'm going to color in the bottom a little bit more because I didn't like the way there was a little bit more wood left right there. And now I'm using two of the towering blocks from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to hot glue this sign in between the two towering blocks. And now using some of the Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree, I'm going to go ahead and hot glue some of that on the base to cover the base up. I took advantage of the broken pieces of moss, as you can see, and I just put a little glue on the front, squished it down on the broken pieces, and it worked great. a really fun cheap easy tiered tray decor idea a cheap candle from the Dollar Tree a cute festive label and some Mod Podge is all you need to have a super cute decorative tiered tray decor piece I'm just using the tissue paper again Mod Podging it down you could even use dishwasher Mod Podge if you want this to be a little more durable and I'm using some of the Dollar Tree lace on the top I have seen things like this sell in boutiques at resort areas for five to seven dollars and for about a dollar fifty you have a super cute accent piece for your tiered tray And this next one is another one of my personal favorites. It never gets old to me. I love doing these and they're perfect for tiered tray decor. So I'm taking six of the towering blocks and gluing them together in rows of three. And then I glued those two together and I made two sets of those and glued them on top of each other. And now I made this again free printable down below as a book cover we're making a book you guys and I usually do the traditional stacks of three books with little words on the side or binders but I thought it would be fun to do something different and change it up and just make a really thick one book just one book so I thought this would be a cute cover and I'm painting the sides now with some white paint and then I'm going to take some pencil and just lightly draw faux 
book pages on and if you could see I'm kind of like gently floating my pencil over it and scribbling it a little bit it kind of makes it look a little blurry and it looks more realistic like book pages instead of just doing harsh lines so that worked out really well and I'm taking some lace from the Hobby Lobby gluing it on the top and then some velvet bow I got on clearance from Walmart that was only 78 cents it's super cute it's like a dusty rose and I decide that the other end needs Needs the lace ribbon too so I add some more so it's nice and even on the bottom plus the book wasn't sitting straight but that's it and I love this DIY For this next DIY, I'm using a cereal box again, and I'm tracing out the shape of a bunny that I just Googled online. You can Google bunny silhouettes online, and you'll have lots and lots of choices to choose from. I chose this one, and I'm just adding a little bit of Mod Podge and gluing some pink material down on the top that I got off of Amazon. I got a really good deal. And again, all of the supplies I use in this video, the boxwood, everything that I get good deals on, I do supply the links down below in my description box if I think it's worthwhile for you guys. So, you know, you can go and look at that too and see if you're interested. Now, while that was drying, I thought it would be fun to see what would happen if I took this bunny silhouette and wrapped it up like I did with the Valentine Day hearts just to see if that would work. This is what you end up with. And that would also be cute inside the little, I'm making like a little nativity or a little uh, house or it can be used like a nativity set too, just a little um, shape of a house out of craft sticks and I'm going to be putting the bunny inside it and in the end I decide the pink one would be better so I cut the pink one out and as you can see I just glued four large craft sticks together and held it together with a large craft stick at the bottom and measured with my bunny to make sure that he wasn't going to be too tall or too big for this and then just cut the top in a triangle shape and then I'm cutting the edge of the, it's kind of self-explanatory what I'm doing here. You can see I'm just cutting everything off. So all we're left with is this triangle shape here that's held together. And I lightly, it's held together with the stick in the back, the craft stick. And I decide it needs another brace at the top when we're all done. I glue that on. I sand everything to make it nice and smooth. And now we're going to put some sides on this. So now I'm using the jumbo craft sticks from Walmart and I cut those down because we're creating like a little window box house, I guess. And this would make a cute nativity like at Christmas time or even Easter if you wanted to put a cross in it. I didn't think of it at the time, but that would actually be really cute. I'm just doing it with the bunny because I, I don't really have very many bunny things on my tear tray at the moment. So <laughs> going with the bunny. And I'm just using, again, hot glue from the Dollar Tree. Really impressed. This is the first time I've used it and everything held together really well. It's still holding together. It's in the kitchen on the counter, so it is exposed to steam and stuff from cooking. And so far, everything is holding together really, really well. And I'm just gluing the sides on. I'm gonna glue a little rooftop on and I'm going to glue a little bottom on. Now I do reinforce it, as you can see, in the back along the seams everywhere with hot glue just to make sure it sticks together. And I do, <laughs> I just wiped it with my finger there. That might have scared some of you, but <laughs> for those of you, first of all, I've been working with hot glue for many, many, many years. So I have really tough skin. And secondly, I did have the glue gun down on low. And if you've worked with hot glue a lot, you can do that and it doesn't hurt. You can use your finger, but it needs to be on low. I can even do it on high sometimes depending on what brand glue gun I'm using. Some of them get way too hot, but anyway. As you saw, I went ahead and distressed the bunny with that furniture pen around the edges and added a little lace bow. And now I'm painting this little box white and we're gonna glue that bunny in the center of it, just like that. And adding some hot glue at the bottom and some more Spanish moss, we're gonna put that at the base. Add a couple of Dollar Tree little cream flowers and voila! 
you've just created a super cute tiered tray decor piece that literally costs pennies on the dollar. I found these super cute hearts at the Dollar Tree during Valentine's Day, and since I'm trying to do some different decor outside of Easter eggs, I thought these would be perfect. I start by taking them apart and giving them one coat of my white chalk paint. <laughs> I didn't have any super glue, so I was worried about the hot glue, but here's the good news. This is Dollar Tree hot glue and it worked perfect. It totally held this together tight enough. I mean, if you want to pry it open, you could force it apart, but these are decorative pieces. I'm not gonna be doing that. And it was a very sturdy hold, so that was nice. After I glue them together, it does need a second coat, so I go ahead and give each one a second coat of white chalk paint. So I took these little watercolor bunnies I found last year online, changed them up a little bit, and applied them to the hearts using my glue stick, just like this. And my first thought was to do pink polka dots. I thought it would look so cute, and I was so unhappy with the result. And unfortunately, because they were polka dots, they were kind of lumpy, so even when I painted over this heart, you still could see it. So I ended up throwing that one away, but that's okay, three were enough. I salvaged three, and I ended up going with a much better idea. I took the color Nutmeg from Apple Barrel Paint and I did some dry brushing really lightly around the edge there to give it a frame. And then I took a Q-tip and just went and edged around the photos as well to give them some dimension and distressing and just cover the edges of the tissue paper and make the whole thing blend in a little bit better. And this is what we have so far. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Dollar Tree lace ribbon. As you can see, I've made three bows out of the lace ribbon. And using the Dollar Tree twine, I've made three bows out of the twine. And I'm gonna glue the lace bow on first. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of fire there to burn off any stray hairs, cut it down a little bit and glue the twine bow on. And then using some roses from another Dollar Tree craft. This These roses are actually, they're from a heart sign from the Dollar Tree and it looked really cheap and awful. <laughs> so I tore them off because I knew I could use them for another DIY and they came in three different colors, but we just glue the roses on the center and we have beautiful tiered tray decor. If you enjoyed today's video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and thank you to all of you that leave comments on my videos that really is the best part of YouTube is reading your comments I love you guys so much and of course until the next one breathe deep fret not and do things that make you happy <music>